In today's video, I am going to go over the differences and actually what I really want to do is try to emphasize the similarities between Newton's law of universal gravitation and Coulomb's law. Now, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Step by Step Science, get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Please subscribe, support our channel, click the notifications bell, give it a thumbs up, leave a nice positive comment, and don't forget to share this video. And in addition to that, we have made a bunch of other teaching and learning materials that you can find at our Teachers Pay Teachers website where they're looking for practice problems, puzzles, and some online simulations that you can do with PETT interactive simulations. In fact, we have two that go together with the topics from this video, and that is Coulomb's Law and Gravitation. You can find those online labs at our Teachers Pay Teachers website. The link is in the description below. I made a bunch of other videos for this topic, which you can link to in the upper right hand corner, but let's get started with similarities between Newton's universal law of gravitation and Coulomb's law. Now, this is Newton's law of universal gravitation, and it basically says that every mass attracts every other mass with a force that is directly proportional to the product of their masses. So you just multiply the two masses, that's the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. This is the square of the distance between them. A lot of times we're talking about planets, so we have an R here like a radius because it's a circular path, but R is the distance between the two objects. This is a gravitational constant, which we'll talk about in a moment, and this, is, of course, is the force of gravity is equal to the gravitational constant times the mass of one of the objects times the mass of the other divided by the square of the distance between them. And now... You keep that picture in your head and you look at Coulomb's law, it looks very similar. We have the force, we have the constant, the two charges, and the square of the distance between them. And Coulomb's law basically says that every charge either attracts or repels. Now, this is one of the differences because in the for gravitation, there's always the force of attraction. But for Coulomb's law, depending on the charge, similar charges are unlike charges, you can have attraction or repulsion. But every charge attracts or repels every other charge with a force that is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of their charges, just like for Newton's law, and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. The square of the distance between them, inversely proportional, this is the distance between them, r squared, and it's inverse, the force is inversely proportional to the square of the difference. Now, you'll notice that those two laws, those two equations look very similar especially when you have them side by side. We have the force of gravity. We have the electric force, the static electric force. We have a constant. We have a constant. We have the two masses directly proportional to the product of the two masses and directly proportional to the magnitude of the two charges. Okay, so we'll talk about when we do an example. We don't put the signs in there. Sometimes there is confusion about that. We take the magnitude of the charges, and in both cases, we divide by the square of the distance between the masses or the square of the distance between the charges. Okay, so let's talk about some of the similarities. This is fascinating. Look at those two things. First, you're talking about masses, and then you're talking about charges. Who would think that the way you calculate the force is so similar for each of those things that seem to be so different? Okay, they're both conservative forces. No energy is going to be lost through those forces. Not like gravity, not like gravity, not like uh, friction. There's no friction, so you're not losing any energy. They are both inverse square law. We recall these inverse square law because they're inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, inverse square law. So we often refer to equations like this as inverse square law. The force is directly proportional to the mass, the product of the mass, or to the charges. So you're in the top, for Newton's law, you have the product of the masses. For Coulomb's law, you have the product of the charges. And the forces are always going to be equal in magnitude and opposite in direction. You'll see that when we do a couple of examples towards the end of this video. Now, we have uh, the differences we're going to talk about. Some of the differences are gravitational force is always attractive. Two objects that have mass are always attracted to each other. They do not repel. The Coulomb force can be either attractive or repulsive. If you have two of the same charges, two positive charges or two negative charges, they're going to repel. If you have opposite charges, negative and positive or positive and negative, then they're always going to be attractive forces. The gravitational constant G is very small, which we'll show you in a moment, and the Coulomb's force constant or the Coulomb's constant K is very large. I think it's a little bit interesting if we look at what would be the force for like one kilogram that's one distance apart and one Coulomb that's one distance, one meter apart. So we can see that and see how the 
constants affect these equations if we do this. We're going to calculate the force of gravity. Now this is the gravitational constant. This is 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 11 newton meters squared kilogram squared. And we're going to look at the force when we have one kilogram, two kilogram masses, one kilogram each, and they're separated by a distance of one meter. So we can have one times one divided by one squared, which of course is one. And therefore the force you will see that turns out the force between those two kilogram masses that are one meter apart is 6.67 .6 times 10 to the minus 11. That's minus 11 newtons. You'll see that's a pretty small force. If we do the same thing for the Coulomb's law, we have the Coulomb's constant is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. This is not minus nine, this is 10 to the ninth newton meter squared Coulomb squared. And we're going to take two one Coulomb charges, two one Coulomb, two objects that each have a charge of one Coulomb, divide them by the distance squared, which is one. Of course, this term is also one. And when you do that, you get a force between those two one Coulomb charges as 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newtons. And you can see that the force for the electric force is much greater than the force for the gravitational force. The force on the charges is much greater than the force on the masses. In fact, if you take the ratio of this force to this force, the force electric for the force gravitational, you'll find that the electric force is 1.3 times 10 to the 20 times bigger. Now that's a lot. That is actually a thousand trillion times larger. So that kind of tells us that the electric force is much stronger than the gravitational force. We think often that the gravitational force is so strong because if we fall down, we get hurt. But the gravitational force is actually not that strong compared to the other uh, elementary forces, okay? All right, so now let's do a couple of examples and we can see how this works for calculating Newton's law, uh, uh, Newton's gravitational force, and also for the Coulomb force. So here we have the Earth and here we have the Moon and these are two objects that are separated by some distance, which we'll talk about. And that means that there's a force of attraction between those two objects. And we said earlier that the forces are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. This is two masses, so they're going to be attracted to each other. The force on the Earth from the Moon is to the right. The force on the Moon from the Earth is to the left. We have one equation we use to calculate both of those forces. So therefore, you know the force on each is going to be equal in magnitude, but you can see they're pointing in opposite in direction. When we calculate the force, it's a vector quantity. We, it's kind of a two-step process. We use first the two masses and to figure out the direction of the force, and then we use the two, not the two, then we use the equation to calculate the magnitude of the force. So we know that the Earth has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms. The Moon is 7.35 times 10 to the 22 kilograms. The distance between them is this many kilometers, which you have to convert to meters because the Coulomb's constant, excuse me, because the gravitational constant has meters in it. And so that's 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters. Here's the gravitational constant. We can plug everything into that equation. It looks kind of like a lot, but you take this value, multiply it by these two, divide by the square. you got to remember it by the square. And you get that the force on the Earth from the Moon would be 1.99 times 10 to the 20 Newtons to the right. And the force on the Moon from the Earth would be the same magnitude but the opposite in direction. Those two forces are equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. Okay, fascinating. Now, we can do something very similar with Coulomb's law. We are going to determine the magnitude and the direction of the force on two electrons that are separated by a distance of five micrometers. Okay, so here's our two electrons. They have negative charges. We're going to call this one Q1, charge one, and this one Q2, charge two. Because they are the same charge, they are going to repel each other. That means when they're five micrometers apart, that the force on number one is going to be to the left. So this is the force on number one from two. You, that's to the left, or you could call that the negative direction. Okay, And the force on two from one is in the opposite direction. That's to the right, or in the positive direction. Okay, if the force is negative, it doesn't mean the force is less than zero. It just means that the force is in the negative direction. Okay, so you can see those two forces are going to be equal in magnitude, but opposite in direction. The charge on an electron, okay, elementary charge is minus 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. 
and we're going to take our Coulomb's law equation. Now, when we put the values for the charge into the equation, we're going to leave off the negative and kind of like the positive is that the number will just be positive. Okay, we're going to leave off the negative sign. You don't put the negative signs in there. All right, I see sometimes people explain it that way. If you want to know the direction, you have to look at the picture, maybe draw a diagram and figure out, well, is it going to be attractive or repulsive and therefore in which direction, whether we have the same charges or opposite charges. Then we're going to just plug everything in. Okay, we have 9.9 .9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared Coulomb squared. We have 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. Now we have two electrons, so they have the same charge. We're going to divide that by the distance between them, 5 times 10 to the minus 6 micro is minus 6 meters. Okay, I'm taking 5 and I'm converting it into meters because once again we have to cancel with this meters. Meters squared cancels with meters squared. Coulomb times Coulomb is Coulomb squared. Cancels this Coulomb squared. And we end up with that the force on number 1, charge 1 from number 2 is 9.2 times 10 to 18 newtons to the left. See, to the left. And that the force on number 2 is equal in magnitude, the same magnitude, the same value, but it's to the right. Okay? So there you go. I think that should help you to understand how interesting it is that the force for two masses, the way you calculate the force for two masses, is really so similar to the way you calculate the force from two charged particles, which you wouldn't necessarily think that they would be the same, but those equations look very similar, and you work with them in a very similar way. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please do all of the following five things. Support our channel, Step-by-Step Step Science. Get all of our excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. You should subscribe. You should click the notifications bell. You should give us a thumbs up. You should leave us a nice positive comment, and you should please share this video. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next video.